Um, hello. Uh, uh, thank you for uh, so much uh, to the organizers for inviting me to speak at this conference today. I only wish that we could be in person, uh, but I look forward to our Zoom conversation uh, at the end. So today I'll be talking to you about um, intestinal cytotoxic CD4 T cells uh, and their associations with immune activation and dysbiosis and untreated HIV infection. I have no disclosures uh, to present today. Chronic inflammation is a key feature of HIV pathogenesis, and uh, the gut is uh, clearly an important source of this inflammation. HIV infection disrupts intestinal immune homeostasis in a number of different, via a number of different mechanisms. Uh, first of all, HIV replicates to very high levels in gut-associated lymphoid tissue in early HIV infection, resulting in the infection and then depletion of uh, um, a large number of CD4 T cells, including Th17 and Th22 subsets. Uh, this results in immune activation of bystander cells, including other T cells, dendritic cells, and innate lymphoid cells, ultimately resulting in mucosal inflammation with aberrant cytokine production. Now this um, inflammatory state feeds back on the epithelial barrier, causing it to be leaky and ulti ultimately resulting in microbial translocation. Uh, likewise, this epithelial barrier disruption uh, leads to a, a microenvironment that promotes microbial dysbiosis uh, with changes in the community structure uh, of the mucosal uh, microbiome. Uh, this has been characterized in many cases by an increase in pathobiont bacteria and a decrease in immune regulatory bacteria. The overall research objective of my lab is to understand host microbe interactions in the setting of HIV infection, uh, and parti in particular, how they contribute to chronic immune activation. And we do this um, in using two different types of uh, study approaches. Uh, first, we look at, we do clinical studies in which we describe or evaluate uh, human immune, virologic, and microbial um, parameters, um, both in the gut and in the blood. Um, and that uh, we look at relationships there. Uh, and then we also, to get more mechanistic and to look for dynamics, we do in vitro modeling of um, human immune cells, HIV, bacteria, and their metabolites, um, and again, and tissue culture. And we use these two methods of, of study to inform one another and to help us address more mechanistic uh, questions in the setting of HIV infection. So the work that I'm gonna to describe today uh, really resulted from a sort of serendipitous finding from a, a previously published transcriptomic study. Um, this was just uh, published in PLOS Pathogens in 2017, and we were attempting there to look at the transcriptome of HIV-infected intestinal CD4 T cells that were exposed to enteric bacteria. And in that study, we looked at lamina propria mononuclear cells from, uh, from a human um, gut, and we infected them with an HIV strain that expressed a green fluorescent protein. And then we exposed them to um, a bacteria, Prevacetella stercoria, which is an enteric um, bacteria that we had found to be elevated in the mucosa of HIV infected individuals. We cultured them for, for four days, and then we sorted on the infected CD4 T cells. And we looked uh, at gene expression using a human um, affimatrix gene array. Now, an interesting finding um, from this study was that in those CD4 T cells that were in HIV infected, but also exposed to microbes, uh, there was this marked upregulation of granzyme genes. And what I'm showing you here is a figure from that paper with downregulated genes on the left, upregulated genes on the right. Um, and in red, I wanna draw your attention to um, uh, granzyme B granzyme H and granzyme A genes. They were all upregulated, um, again, in these CD4 T cells that were exposed to um, bacteria and HIV infected um, simultaneously. So we wanted to confirm uh, that granzymes were um, up increased uh, at the protein level um, in these cells. And so we did a similar experiment where we looked at lamina propria mononuclear cells uh, that were again infected with um, uh, a GFP expressing uh, HIV, uh, and then exposed to uh, P. stercoria in vitro. 
And in this case, we looked at uh, Granzyme B uh, protein expression in those cells by flow cytometry. And you can see either by the flow plots on the left or the summary data on the right, uh, that when you infect with HIV only, uh, you do get a little bit of upregulation of Granzyme B expression um, in those cells. Uh, but when you uh, expose them to bacteria alone, there's a much more uh, marked increase in Granzyme B expression. And then the HIV infected and um, bacteria exposed uh, cells, uh, similar to our previous transcriptome study, showed a marked increase um, in Granzyme B expression. So I wanna tell you a little bit about granzymes, um, and their function and expression. Uh, granzymes are serine proteases that cleave both intracellular and extracellular substrates. But typically they're produced by CD8 T cells and NK cells uh, and their most well-described activity uh, really is killing of target cells uh, via apoptosis. And this is typically a perforin-dependent um, process. However, um, over, in recent years, a number of additional activities have been attributed to granzymes. And those include promoting inflammatory cytokine production by antigen-presenting cells, cleaving inactive cytokines into their biologically active forms, and sometimes actually directly killing bacteria. Now, granzyme B expressing CD4 T cells have been reported in a number of different settings. Um, and primarily, they've been reported to be cytotoxic CD4 T cells uh, because they also tend to express other cytolytic molecules, such as perforin and CD107. Um, they're often described as um, recognizing antigenic peptides uh, that are class, MHC class II restricted. And um, they've been identified in a number of chronic viral infections. Uh, as well as in some murine and human bacterial infections. And in, in particular, in the study of HIV infection, HIV-specific cytolytic CD4 T cells have been shown to be increased in the blood during acute and chronic inf infection. Uh, they've been described as being polyfunctional and expressing CCR5 and perforin, and in some cases to actually contribute to antiviral immunity. However, uh, the extent to which these cells um, contribute to HIV-associated gut pathogenesis and their role in the gut uh, and in chronic inflammation uh, really has not been uh, fully evaluated. So to um, move this work forward, we developed some hypotheses. Um, the first is just that gut, we think that gut CD4 T cells potentially evolved um, the cytolytic potential to counteract translocating and or pathogenic bacteria. Um, in a normal gut, there's very little uh, granzyme B expression in CD4 T cells, but upon exposure to bacteria, this is very quickly upregulated. Uh, we further hypothesized that during HIV infection, with this breakdown in intestinal immune homeostasis and microbial translocation, the role of these cells could become overtly inflammatory and exacerbated um, due to exposure to both uh, virus as well as bacteria, resulting in sort of a chronic increase uh, in granzyme B expression. So we asked the question, you know, are granzyme B expressing gut CD4 T cells increased during untreated HIV infection? And to, do, uh, to answer this question, uh, we, we were able to obtain samples from a previous clinical study we, uh, these were colonic tissue biopsies, um, and we, we studied 10 uh, people with HIV infection that were not receiving antiretroviral therapy at the time of the study, um, and 10 uninfected controls. Uh, these study participants were selected from a larger cohort, uh, and we uh, selected them based on having CD4 counts greater than 400, so that we had adequate number of cells uh, to evaluate. Uh, and they also were selected to have the highest levels of gut HIV replication, inflammation, and microbial translocation because uh, we wanted to make sure that we could look for associations with um, uh, both systemic and mucosal pathogenesis. The controls were balanced for age and sex. And this is a, a diagram, uh, sorry, a table showing uh, the clinical study of participant characteristics. And as I said, we balance for age and sex. Uh, the uh, participants that were um, people with HIV infection were pr pr primarily men who have sex with men, uh, whereas the uh, control group were not, so there was not balance there. 
uh, the, the group was balanced for race and ethnicity, but um, the HIV infected cohort had slightly lower CD4 counts as might be expected. And um, you can see that their um, uh, average uh, plasma RNA copies per mil was around 25,000 in the people with HIV. Um, and they've been infected for a little over an average of three years. To identify colonic B positive CD4 T cells um, in the lamina propria, uh, we used uh, multispectral fluorescent microscopy. And we looked for granzyme B expression in CD3 positive here, CD8 minus cells, and this is granzyme B expression in red. And then you can see uh, here they're co-localized. Um, and we used this, uh, this approach because HIV infected cells downregulate CD4 expression. And we didn't want to miss those infected cells. So in a blinded analysis, we enumerated the percentage of these cells, um, both as a percentage of, of total CD3 po positive CD8 minus, as well as the number of these cells per tissue area. So the result of, of that analysis in comparing um, the controls to people with HIV infection, uh, we found that indeed there was a, a, a much greater frequency and a percentage of granzyme B expressing CD4 T cells um, in the colons of uh, people with HIV infection um, compared to controls. And you can see here on the left that these are, um, this is a, the percentage of, of those cells that are granzyme B expressing. And here on the right is the number per tissue area. And those were, they were increased in both um, types of measurements. And, and what was interesting about that, 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 that we, saw, we saw that finding um, in the setting of a really marked CD4 T cell depletion um, in the colon. And um, this is looking again at the percentage of CD3 T cells um, uh, that are CD8 minus, and there was a marked depletion of those cells in the HIV infected cohort. Um, and then this is looking at the cell per tissue area. So despite the fact that these cells were um, depleted, uh, there was still a much greater expression of granzyme B um, in that same cell population. So we next asked whether frequencies of granzyme B expressing gut CD4 T cells were associated with features of HIV pathogenesis. And to do this, we use linear regression modeling to look at associations between these granzyme B uh, frequencies, uh, as well as uh, compared to a number of different other readouts um, that we had um, evaluated in previous studies. And these include clinical, immunologic, virologic, um, and mucosal microbiome readouts. We accounted for age, sex, and HIV status in this analysis, and we also accounted for multiple testing using a false discovery rate. Just to give you an indication of some of the um, endpoints from this study, um, on the left you see uh, the, the peripheral blood and plasma analyses. We looked at inflammatory readouts, immune activation markers, microbial translocation, intestinal barrier, um, and um, plasma granzymes. And on the right, uh, we also, um, based on um, colonic biopsy um, analyses, we were able to look at mucosal immune cell composition, um, inf inflammation and by gene transcripts, as well as immune activation and microbial translocation uh, markers. We also looked at tissue HIV RNA levels. And really the result of that um, uh, analysis uh, revealed uh, associations between gut granzyme B expressing CD4 T cell frequencies and blood CD4 and CD8 T cell activation. That was based on CD38 HLA-DR co-expression. And you can see that the, um, the estimate is greater uh, for CD4 T cell as activation than CD8 T cell activation. Um, and what we're showing here in this graph um, is that for each 1% increase in activated blood CD4 T cells, the average number of granzyme B expressing cells per tissue area uh, increased by 16. So that's just an example of what we're looking at here. And these were significant um, e even using the false discovery rate correction. Uh, we saw these associations, whether or not we looked at the cells as a percent of CD4 or as a tissue per area. 
Uh, likewise, we saw associations uh, between significant associations between these granzyme B expressing T cell frequencies and um, both colonic CD4 and CD8 T cell activation. Again, this was looking, uh, looking at the cells in the colon, uh, both CD3, sorry, CD4 and CD8 T cells that it co-expressed CD38 and HLA-DR. Um, again, you can see that these are significant by FOSS discovery rate. Um, the granzyme B CD4 T cell frequencies were also significantly associated with two other um, uh, colonic uh, uh, findings or readouts. And those were colonic granzyme B gene transcripts and myeloid dendritic cell, uh, mucosal myeloid dendritic cell frequencies. But otherwise, there were no other significant associations with these cells. We next looked at associations between these cells, these granzyme B expressing cells, and features of the mucosal microbial um, uh, microbiome, and in particular, looking at taxa abundance. Uh, from, this was also using microbiome data from a previously published study from, uh, on these same individuals, um, in which the key microbiome findings were as follows. We saw that there were HIV-associated differences at all taxonomic levels consistent with dysbiosis, we saw changes in the, uh, at the phylum level, at the genus level, and in particular, an increased um, uh, Prevotella abundance, uh, decreased butyrate producing bacteria. And the dysbiotic profile was associated with microbial translocation um, and also immune activation. Um, this was primarily driven by Prevotella species abundance. Now, what we did in this analysis was very focused. We looked only at those uh, taxa that were significantly altered in HIV infection. So this wasn't an unbiased um, uh, microbiome analysis, but focused with the probably around 30 plus um, taxa that we looked at. And in one slide, I can summarize the results. Um, we, the, the only um, relationships that we saw with the granzyme B uh, CD4 T cells were um, related to Prevotella taxa abundance. And this was really across all taxonomic levels. So if you look at this uh, figure, you can see um, at the phylum level in the Bacteroidetes, there was a significant association. Uh, this, is, this contains the Prevotella um, species. Uh, at the family level, at the genus level, and then two uh, species that we found to be increased in HIV infection were also uh, linked to these granzyme B expressing T cells. And the interpretation of this graph is that for each 1% increase in tax abundance, the average number of granzyme B expressing cells increased by 70 to 250 cells. Um, and um, we, again, we saw these associations. However, we looked at the granzyme B expressing CD4 T cells, whether a cell by, by area um, or a percentage of CD4 T cells. So to conclude, um, we believe that this is the first study to show an accumulation of granzyme B expressing CD3 positive CD8 minus uh, T cells in the human gut during untreated HIV infection. These cells were associated with circulating activated T cells, which is a known predictor of disease progression, uh, to mucosal activated T cells, both CD4 and CD8, and with mucosal Prevotella abundance, which we found to be increased in our HIV infected cohort um, and, and numerous other studies now have shown to be linked to sexual practice and other studies. Um, uh, so um, we, we believe that there is a link here between the granzyme B expression um, and some of these markers of pathogenesis as well as um, microbial dysbiosis. But there are a number of knowledge gaps or questions that remain unanswered. Um, those include, how do these cells um, contribute to mucosal damage? Um, are there target cells that they're killing? Um, do they induce inflammatory cytokine production? Are they um, destroying um, mucosal tissue extracellularly? And is this granzyme B response gut specific or would we also see this in the peripheral blood? And these are ongoing uh, studies that we're involved in. And then a third question really is what is the antigen specificity of these granzyme B expressing CD4 T cells? You know, for instance, do they recognize bacteria? Do they recognize virus? Are they non-specifically activated? So we look forward to addressing some of these um, additional questions in future studies. So I'd like to end by acknowledging um, a number of different individuals who have been important in this work. I wanna acknowledge the members of my lab and in particular, Dr. Steph Dillon, 
who has been really a partner in all aspects of this work with me. Likewise, um, Amario Santiago um, is the uh, co-PI on a grant uh, to, to look uh, further into these questions. And I wanna acknowledge him and the members of his lab as well. And then importantly, uh, we have um, one, I wanna thank the members of the biostatistics team, um, Emily Cooper, Harry Smith, and Katerina Kekris, um, who have helped us uh, with a number of, uh, you know, very challenging uh, bioinformatics uh, questions and study design. Uh, and then importantly, we couldn't do this work without the study participants, um, as well as the physicians and staff at the Infectious Disease Group Practice Clinic who helped us with recruiting. And then lastly, I'd like to thank the NIH for supporting our research. And I really look forward to uh, a discussion and uh, at the question and answer session that's to follow. Thank you so much.